I've got one. I've never felt you. I don't know if you've got one. And I don't know how sensitive this test is, but I can, I can feel a little notch there. I think you might have one too. Welcome to the Aesthetics Master Show. I'm Dr. Tim Pierce. Hi, I'm Miranda Pierce. And today we're talking about the forgotten artery. So it's often left off in textbooks and it's often left off in teaching. And when you discover it, when you've been injecting for a few years, it can make your blood run cold. So let's talk about the Zygomatica facial artery. So why is it not in the textbooks? I'm not entirely sure. Um, it might be because it's actually not present on all people. So it's a in one paper, the best paper I could find on it, uh, it was only mentioned um, that it was present in only one in three people. Okay. So it's not always there. That's one of the reasons. It's it's just a tiny little artery that comes out of a little foramen. So the zygomatic facial foramen, you can sometimes palpate it. I've got one. I never felt you. I don't know if you've got one. And I don't know how sensitive this test is, but I can, I can feel a little notch there. I think you might have one too. You can sometimes feel it. And I, I think it, because it comes with a nerve, you can feel it feel slightly different if you push on it. That might be a guide. I'd really love to have an ultrasound to find out for sure. Um, but that might be one thing that you can do to figure out whether you've got one there. Of course, the reason it's so important is that we actually inject very close to it many times. So it's important to know that it exists. Okay. So what kind of treatment are we going to come across this for? So you might be injecting in this area because you're treating the lateral to cheek junction. So kind of blending in the, the cheek and the eye, or it could be part of a cheek treatment that you're injecting. It's often where we're trained to inject on the, on the bone, on the, on the zygoma. So we're often a bone level when treating cheeks and, and tear troughs, depending on your technique. And that's why it's so important to know about its existence. So is it like to cause any problems if you were to inject it? Well, I've never seen a case or heard of a case of it being injected that caused an injury. Um, but that doesn't mean they haven't happened because most of the injuries that we get actually aren't reported or shared. So it could have happened. Um, in terms of what the impact would be, well, it's connected. It actually comes off probably your lacrimal artery in many cases, and the lacrimal artery comes off the ophthalmic artery. So it is theoretically possible if you injected enough product into that space that you could cause blindness. That would be the most, and it's very theoretical, but possibly you could cause that. I think in your favor is it's probably very, very small in most people. So it's probably very hard to hit, very hard to cannulate. And in most cases, it wouldn't make, you wouldn't, a, you wouldn't be able to push a lot of product into it. That probably protects people. And also if there's a nerve coming from it as well, you're likely to get a reaction from the patient and that might give you some protection uh, because most clinicians would naturally not persist if the patient's in significantly more discomfort than they would be usually. But it's a bit disconcerting that we don't know about it. I mean, and did you just come across it? So, uh, yeah, I've had clinicians, basically, if you memorize most anatomy posters and most anatomy pictures, it's often left off. So if you, and, and also the way a lot of the training, if you watch an injector illustrate the arteries on the face, they often leave that one off. And um, so it, when you discover it on your own, it's a bit disconcerting. I think it's because it's clinically probably not that important, but we all like to know what's going on before mm -hmm. we inject. So when you find out that it's there and you you weren't taught, it's a little bit of a moment of, I wonder what else could be there that I haven't been taught. Exactly. So um, it's useful It's useful to know that it's there and everyone who watches it does know now. So I think part of the confidence of being a fully rounded clinician is to be able to predict a certain amount obviously you don't know everything that's going on underneath but i think if you suddenly get yeah absolutely well we're in a battle constantly to build a mental model that gives us the confidence to actually inject and when you find out there's some fundamental flaw in your model in in a part of the face that you regularly inject it's it is rightfully disconcerting mm -hmm. but the great news is if that's if that's happened to anyone who's listening to this then you're, you're on the way away from that. And it's actually a continuous battle. We're always picking up little things about anatomy that you hadn't quite visualized correctly, or you discover there's a variant of it. And this is the process you should be on your whole career is finding out a little bit of information, improving your mental model, and then injecting slightly differently. So can you show us on Bruce the head? Yeah, so it's just this little, little vessel just about there. I don't know if that's gonna be good enough to crop in on. Um, and there is usually a foramen. So if you Google zygomatic of facial foramen, you will find it um, in some skulls, but you'll also see in many skulls it's not present. And this is where the confusion comes. It just isn't present on all people. And on anatomical skulls, it's not always present, but it could be present on your 
patient. I would also then get, say, if you've done some exercise, I've recommended this lots of times before. If you think you might have one, I'm pretty sure I can feel a pulse on mine. Obviously, we have pulse on our fingers too, but if I go for a, a run and my heart's really pounding and I put my finger on these various places, I can often feel a little pulse and that will make it more real to you exactly where it is in real life rather than just on textbooks. So how can people avoid this artery when injecting? So to avoid the sagomatic facial artery, the first thing is to palpate for it. Get it, get it, especially in thinner people, you might be able to feel the little, a little foramen and that'll give you a good guide where not to inject. Um, the next thing would be, as always, if you're using a needle in that area, you, you should aspirate. But I would also suggest that you, with, with some practice, you'll get an idea about where it is. Then you can just go either side of it and then aspirate. Um, watch your patient because they if you touch on the area and there's a nerve there they will respond differently so i always say this the patient responds differently to how they are to other injections you might just want to find another spot even if it's four millimeters over to the left or the right and they don't respond in the same way that gives you some reassurance um finally you might want to use different instruments if you know you're injecting around there for example a cannula is probably less likely to cause injury than a needle in this in this circumstance um and yeah, that should be it. So would different fillers affect the risk level for this artery? Well, I'm only thinking from first principles here because we really don't know. But it does make sense to me that a lower viscosity product would go through smaller vessels more easily. And I know if you, depending on which products you use, they often come with with thinner needles. So there is, if you're using, like I use Juvenal Volbella quite a lot, great product. But if I'm using that with a 31 gauge needle, it's likely to flow a bit more easy into those vessels if I was to cannulate one. So I think you're a bit more likely to cause a significant occlusion with a low viscosity product where you're injecting in that area. So that's not to say that they're dangerous or, or that you should always use thicker quality products. It's just a principle around what's most likely to flow deeper into the, into the vasculature and it's low viscosity products. So let us know if this is news to you or if you already knew about the zygomatic or facial artery. Don't forget that if you enjoyed this YouTube show and you would like to hear it in podcast form, please do head over to Spotify or iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and listen to us on your drive or your commute. And if you're already listening to it, you can get the visual version on YouTube. Indeed. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you next week. <laughs>